a shock to some of you noobs and hopefully really informative for some of you guys who have been growing Venus flytraps for a long time. The shocker for the noobs is Venus flytraps have flowers? What? Yes, they absolutely have flowers. Probably not the sick ones at the, um, the hardware store unless they're trying to die. So there's such a thing as a bloom and die. But big, healthy Venus flytraps like this do flower. And you've probably heard us say a thousand times, we've been doing this a long time, to cut the flowers off. So why have we let all of ours flower here? To make seeds. Seeds for you guys. And some for us. We keep some for us um, to grow out to make new cultivars, but as you probably noticed, uh, if you were in on the big Venus flytrap seed rush uh, last year, we've been making lots and lots of Venus flytrap seeds. And so I want to teach you guys how you can make Venus flytrap seeds all on your own some. I mean, you'll need some Venus flytraps first. I know a good nursery to buy some at. Anyways, um, one thing that to note about this is there are no Venus flytrap hybrids. So a hybrid suggests the crossing of two different species and there's only one species of Venus flytrap. So all this diversity is all just one species, just like dogs. So we're not making hybrids, we're making crosses. How do I know what to cross together? So just like when you cross two people, the kids will be a mix of traits and characteristics of both parents. It's the same thing with literally any other biological thing, and that's true of Venus flytraps. So if you want a really red plant, I might cross two red ones together. If you want a really giant red plant, I might cross a giant one with a red one. You might not get any giant red ones. You might get one giant red one that's the one. Some of them might be all red. You never know what you're going to get. That's most of the fun of it. Um, so once the flowers are open, and this is the time of year when that typically happens, Venus flytraps, like I said, sometimes if they're not doing so well, they'll throw a weird flower in like late summer, or sometimes if they're doing really well, they'll throw a flower in late summer. But for the most part, all Venus flytrap flowering started a couple weeks ago, um, around May, maybe mid-May, and now we're right up against June, and you can see they're doing their full thing. Um, a paintbrush is a good tool for this. You pr don't want like a brand new paintbrush that doesn't have any like bristles. You're trying to imitate, you know, maybe the little hairs on a bee or something. So a nice fluffy brush is good like this. Um, there's a little bit of timing trickiness to Venus flytrap flowers. Other than that, it's pretty easy. The little, um, you can see pollen on these little anthers here. Um, usually when the anthers are sticking straight up like that, that's when there's a lot of pollen on there. And then you can see on this one here, this little fluffy feather is there now, and the anthers are pushed off to the side, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of pollen left on those anymore. Um, plants hate self-crossing. So one of the weird things about plants is they're totally capable of putting pollen on their own stigma and selfing. Um, it's a fun thing to do sometimes horticulturally because you can get weird things, but it usually creates a weaker progeny, and so plants are always trying to avoid that, and they do that with this timing here. So I'll take these upright anthers, we'll have lots and lots of pollen on there, and I'm just gonna kind of swoop it like that. If Danielle looks really good, let's see, I'm gonna try and, um, Danielle always looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> no, Daniela is able to see it, maybe against the black, you can see that there's a bunch of pollen on those bristles. Okay, now I need to get back to that feathery guy, the stigma. That's the receptive part of the flower, and I'm just gonna self it because why not? Here we go. Um, so I'm just gonna run that pollen over that feathery guy, and all those little feathery little tentacles are gonna grab it. It's made to have a lot of surface area, and now it's pollinated. Venus flytrap seeds um, ripen relatively quickly. I would say usually in a couple weeks, maybe a little bit longer. Um, I could probably find some. Where did you see those, Daniel? Right here. Oh, right here. Yeah, so you can see, particularly there, there's like a little papery kind of black sack, and then when that tears open, you know the seeds are ready, and you'll see some um, shiny patent leather, black, black patent leather little seeds. They're very, and they're kind of pear-shaped. If you order any other seeds from eBay, and often those are fake, they don't look like that, they're probably not Venus flytrap seeds. A lot of times you get sunflower, dragon fruit, wheat, anything but a Venus flytrap. Oh, and what we're talking about is I always say, there are no blue Venus flytraps, so stop buying, buying seats for them right now. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that um, inspires you guys to go out into your uh, Venus flytraps. Maybe let a few of them flower and make some seeds. Um, you can also see what to do with those seeds in any of our um, seed sowing guides 
uh, on our YouTube channel. Like and follow. Have a great day.